Hello, my name is Tim Anderson, an instructor with Rocco Rescue, and today we're going to be discussing the CMC MPD. Today we're introducing the CMC MPD, or multi-purpose device. It gets this name because it can be used both as a descent control device, a pulley for progress capture and a mechanical advantage system, and as a belay device. It meets general, uh, general use requirements for NFPA 1983 in all three of these categories. So we've got general use across the board. Starting on the front of the device, we have our, our main anchor point at the top. We have our release handle, and this is the uh, primary means of, of releasing the rope out of the device. We have a parking brake. It locks the rope inside for temporarily securing the load uh, as you're using it. We also have a becket down at the bottom, which we'll see later removes the need for an additional anchor plate. Transitioning to the back of the device, we have a diagram, which is going to help us load the device, making sure we get it in there the right way, the hand going to the slack and the load in indicated there. Inside the device is a one-way pulley sheave. It uh, moves clockwise but not counterclockwise and this allows the rope to go around and be used both as a pulley um, and as a descent control device. When we pivot the back plate we have a movable brake which is what will pinch on the rope to lock it in the device and we have a fixed brake. The fixed brake is what the rope will be bent around to create uh, friction for lowering we also have a secondary friction post, which is uh, for heavy loads where the, you need extra friction uh, to negotiate them, two-person loads and such. We also have a, a shoulder here that we're going to be uh, taking a look at when we load the rope in the device. Now I'm going to take you through how, uh, how to load the device so that it's ready for use. The best way I've found to do it is take the front plate, put it in your left hand. Look at the back, you've got a diagram here. And we'll open the plate up take our rope and I take the load end and load it clockwise around the pulley sheave inside. And then I close the back plate being mindful to watch this shoulder so it doesn't pinch the rope. Once I uh, close the back plate I'm going to load the device onto an anchor strap. And now I'll do a quick function test. If I pull on this load end the device should lock. And that's how I know it's loaded incorrectly. From here we're going to transition into a descent control mode and give you a demonstration of that application. Now that we've loaded the rope in our device, we're going to transition into how to use the MPD as a descent control device. We're going to start out with sort of a word of caution. It's noted on the front of the front plate and on the back to always grip the rope. That's to remind you that the, the main friction isn't coming from this release handle, it's coming from pulling the rope against the fixed brake. That's very important. So what we want to do for the lower is start by taking our brake hand and pulling hard back against the fixed brake. We'll come under with our, our, the release handle with our right hand. We pull up and then we're going to twist counterclockwise. And that's going to allow the rope to, free, to flow freely through the device. The friction is controlled by how much I pull against that fixed brake. If I keep it pulled back towards my body, it's going to be more friction. If I move it out, it's going to be less and the load's going to move faster. But I don't want to move past the 90 degree angle because I don't want to risk losing the load. If I need extra friction, I can add the slack into the rope back to the secondary friction post. This is going to give me a, a, a big jump in friction, so if I have a two-person load or something like that, uh, I, can, I can get the control that I need. We want to also go with a, um, we want to make sure that there is an, sort of an S shape. That's how we control our, our friction. So looking how the rope enters, goes around the pulley sheave and back out the bottom. This is illustrated well if you look at the, the back plate, how the rope comes in, follows the uh, drawing around and, and exits here. That S is where our friction comes from. If we need to stop the, stop the lower or uh, if our lower is on the ground, we can activate that parking brake and this will keep rope from, from flowing through. It's just a temporary measure though, so if we want to tie the, the device off to leave it, we'll also add a knot, we'll tie just a simple overhand knot, and now we can walk away. We have our parking brake activated and we have a knot to back us up. One of the great things about the MPD is how quickly it can transition from a lower to a raise. So at this point, if we've lowered our rescuer, we've got our patient ready to go, we can transition to a uh, raise immediately because we already have the rope uh, loaded around a high efficiency pulley sheave. It's given us progress capture so as we haul it will capture. So what we're going to start with is building a quick uh, 3 to 1 Z-Rig mechanical advantage system. 
We'll add a rope grab. You can use a mechanical cam or a prusik. And we'll take a single sheave pulley. One carabiner. Add it to our cam. So now we've quickly built a three to one mechanical advantage system. We're gonna disconnect our parking brake and I can start to haul. It's gonna automatically pull through my device. If I let go, it'll capture my progress immediately. So it's a very efficient device. It's very easy to use and makes a really rapid transition from a lower to a raise. Now if a three to one's just not enough for us, if we've got a two person load or, or need to clear some obstacles, we can transition to a five to one mechanical advantage system very easily. What we're gonna do is disconnect the single sheet pulley from our cam and bring it back and connect straight to the becket that's on the MPD. This is a, a unique feature, that way we don't have to have a rigging plate to add any other equipment. We can go straight in, we can leave the rope in the single pulley. We'll get a double sheave pulley and grab the rope leaving the single sheave pulley and add it to our double. One additional carabiner. And now we've quickly transitioned to a five to one mechanical advantage system. Same rules apply. As we haul, the rope will travel through the MPD and capture our progress easily. We're gonna transition now into using the MPD as a belay device. Again, it's general use rated in this application. It passes the British Columbia belay test. And we're gonna show you how to use it both on the ground when the device is resting and up in the air when it's suspended off an anchor. We're gonna start with how to belay a raise. It's very simple with this device. Because it locks automatically, if I pull on it, all I have to do is hand over hand as the load comes up. If I let go, again, it's automatically gonna lock. And with this pulley sheave in here, it's a very smooth, very easy transition. It's a little more difficult is belaying a lower, especially with the initial edge transition uh, before they're out there. When this device is loaded on the ground, what we want to do is keep this rope unseated from the pulley sheave. Basically, we're trying to push the, the rope to the top of the device so it doesn't lock up the, the locking mechanism. So what we're going to do is put our brake hand rested on our knee, and then we'll slowly push-pull the rope through, keeping a little tension on it. And that way, if it, again, if there's a grab, it's going to automatically capture for us. Now we've transitioned from belaying with the device on the ground, supported by the ground itself, to more of a raised anchor system where the uh, MPD is now loaded on an anchor strap, but the, the weight of the device is carried by the rope and by the anchor strap itself. For belaying a raise, there's no change. It's still very simple. Hand over hand up. If you should lose a load, it's going to lock for you automatically. The difference comes with belaying a lower. This device becomes very sensitive because of its weight, and the, the rope wants to activate that um, movable uh, cam to lock it in place. So what we want to do, one way to trick to uh, overcome this, is to let the device hang sideways and kind of use the load end of the rope against this shoulder on the back plate here. By doing that, it's going to keep the rope from getting uh, locked up in the cam and ke keep it pushed up to the top. So what we'll do is I'll simply push-pull, let the weight of the device kind of hang on the uh, load line itself. And again, should the belay need to activate, it's going to lock automatically. This becomes difficult for a long lower, though, to maintain this type of uh, function. So what the man manufacturer recommends is that once your load gets over the edge, you're going to transition into a mirrored system or a two-tension system, where basically the uh, main line and the belay line are going to be sharing the load it, it, uh, together. They're no longer going to be one uh, loaded main line, one slack belay. They're both going to share the load together. So instead of doing a push-pull, I'm going to transition back behind the MPD itself like I was operating a lower, bend the rope against the secondary friction, or excuse me, against the uh, fixed brake, and I'll do the handle release to control my lower. I want to share that load, the bulk of it being on the main line, with some of it taken up by the safety. That way, if there is a main line failure, there's no slack in the system, so it's going to prevent that shock load. Um, the downside is it takes a lot of coordination, so your team has to decide if, if the mirrored system works for you guys, but it is a very efficient way uh, to manage the belay of a load. 
As we've demonstrated today, the CMC MPD or multi-purpose device really does live up to its name. It's a great tool as both a descent control device, a progress capture device for mechanical advantage and hauling systems, and as a belay device. Like any tool, it has its limitations, so it's up to you and your team to determine if it's the right piece of equipment for you. I hope you've enjoyed this edition of Roco Rescue Talk.